Welcome back to the part 4 tutorial of FastAPI in Python. In this video, you'll learn how to use pass parameters to filter for a specific user from the database. Let's dive in. Hi everyone, I'm Lian. Welcome to Just Into Data, where data science and data engineer materials are shared and made simpler for you. So, we'll continue from the previous code. We've set up a get operation for the past users to return all the user information from the database. What if we want to look for a specific user only? Let's add another get operation with the pass parameter. We'll copy this get operation, paste it below, and modify based on it. Within the pass here, followed by users, we can add slash, then curly brackets, we can put a variable called username. This username is a pass parameter or pass variable. The curly brackets represent placeholders of strings. This is the same syntax as formatting strings in Python. Then, the value of this pass parameter, username, can be passed as arguments to the corresponding function below. Let's also change the function name to get users pass. This change is optional, but it's more clear to use different function names for separate operations. So within this function, let's use the pass parameter as argument here, username. Then we can remove this line of code. Instead of returning all the user information, we can get it to return for the database user db square brackets, filtering for the key of username. Recall that user db is a Python dictionary, so filtering for its key of a specific username will return its corresponding value, which is the inner dictionary with information of such user. One more thing, if you look at the database, notice that all the usernames in our database are strings, so we should annotate username to be strings. Let's go back to the get operation with the pass parameter. Within the argument of the function, we can add colon str for string. So we are adding type hints here. We're telling Python that this parameter should be a string. We've talked about how fast API works great based on the standard Python type hints in the first tutorial. This is the main place to declare type hints with FastAPI as function parameters. Besides str for string, we can also use other standard Python types such as integer, float, and bool, and even use our custom defined types. We'll see examples in the later tutorials. Here are a few benefits for using type hints with FastAPI. First, FastAPI will automatically convert the requests to the required type. And when the data is invalid, FastAPI will generate automatic errors. Also, as we type more code, the editors like PyCharm provide support such as type checks and auto-completion. It's hard to see all these benefits since this example is too simple. We'll talk more of it as we write more code in the later videos. And that's all for the code. Let's save and run this. If we open the terminal, my app is actually still running from the previous video. If yours is not, you can use the same uvcorn command in the previous tutorials. So we can go to the browser and type in slash docs to look at this Fagger documentation. Now there are two get operations. The first one is the same as the previous video. It's for requests sent to the path of users. The second get operation is what we've just added. It goes to the path with slash users slash path parameter of username. Let's expand it and try it out. As you can see, now under the parameters tab, we have a parameter called username. It is a path parameter. It has to be a string since we've declared it as a string. You can see that there's a small red princess required, so we must put a string in this box before executing. Let's do Jack. 
which is a username in our database, and execute. You can see the request URL has passed of slash users slash jack, so that placeholder of username has been replaced by the string of jack. And we've got a 200 success response with the response body here. It is the user information for the username jack. Great! We can again try the operation in the browser directly. Let's copy this URL, remove jack, and try another username of Jane. There! This returned Jane's user information from our database. And that's it! In this video, you've added a pass parameter to filter for a specific username from the database. Next, we'll learn how to use query parameters to filter for users based on some criteria. Stay tuned! Did you learn something new in this video? If so, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below this video, right now. If you're interested in more data science tutorials and courses, please head over to our website, justintodata.com. Thank you and see you in the next video.